Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. You know, after having to do with a lot of work going around, especially now that I'm going to sign in this year for the fall semester at GCC for my second one class. And of course, I've been working out at YMCA uh, during the summer, but I also had taken long breaks, you know, just doing a lot of reviews and all this other stuff going around. Yeah. That, that sort of thing. But um, I did finally want to see a movie on Labor Day weekend as a celebration of my uncle's birthday. I saw Spider-Man Far From Home. At this time the sequel is about Peter Parker aka Spider-Man and working together with the former Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury and Maria Hill joining them by a mysterious uh, superhero or what it seems uh, Quentin Beck, aka Mysterio, who about to join together in you know, fighting all these uh, elemental creatures while having to go on a summer field trip with his classmates uh, for a European vacation. So things are going to get pretty difficult for him. Now I was aware that there's actually an extended cut uh, for this movie. Because previously we just got an extended cut for Avengers uh, Endgame when it was still playing in theaters. So we had the theatrical release and then later they had to re-release it again for the, the extended cut. So they're doing the same thing for Spider-Man Far From Home. Just adding uh, four minutes of new footage that didn't quite make it. So consider that your <laughs> something that you will find on Blu-ray, DVD, 4K Ultra HD or so. You know. Which they're going to put it on there anyway if they can. I mean, no doubt about it. But, but I guess they just know that they want to be able to add some more to the story. So at that rate, I, I might have had went to see the extended cut. Um, I'm not going to mention it, however. I, I just want to to make sure that that's exactly what we're, we're getting at. And we've already been hearing uh, recently with uh, the whole uh, Sony MCU split, which is both Sony and, and Disney, you know, how they're not going to be able to make another Spider Man, or maybe they will, but it just won't be part of uh, the deal. Uh, that's the situation that's been going around. And I know Tom Holland saying that it's not a big deal as long as you know things work out. And I mean, I wouldn't mind the continuation of the story. I mean, where it all left off after the first two, and but it's going to probably take some time and effort to do so. But I, I know uh, they've been in this situation for for years now with all the previous Spider-Man films such as the first three films uh, that Sam Raimi directed. I mean, we couldn't even get a fourth Spider-Man after the, the battle of Spider-Man 3. I mean, with that situation happening, and that turned out to be the weakest of the bunch. Actually, turned out to be one of the worst ones. And then we had to bring it back with The Amazing Spider-Man. We only had two with... Um, Andrew Garfield and, and Mark Webb uh, directing it instead of uh, Tobey Maguire you know being the star of Peter Parker and Spider-Man but now we finally get it again but with Tom Holland not the director the actor the British actor to take over so it sets way all the way to where he was back in high school again and now he's beginning to join in with the Avengers or any other because they want Spider-Man to be part of the MCU which is Marvel Cinematic Universe it just feels like uh, Spider-Man just keeps getting cursed like he's you know his uh, spider is uh, it just seems like he's um, his spider sense just keeps on tickling and tingling completely no matter what happens 
But in the end, I, I hope there there will be a way to fix this problem because you know Disney's been greedy a lot lately. You know already with these live action remakes and and now we're getting more movies coming up, especially with their their brand new streaming service Disney Plus. And I'm not looking forward to this. I mean I thought about it, but then it's like it's going to be a joke. I mean, sure, they're going to get all the Disney libraries and all that stuff. I mean, sure, you may have Heavyweights, you may have Enchanted and all that, but I have them on Blu-ray. And, hey, sure, you may have all the Mighty Ducks films and all that, but I'm, there's no way I'm going to sign up for that, just so I can see the film in high definition. I mean, geez, I mean, I'm not going to be able to see Sound of the South in high definition because of this crap. Because it seems like Disney just keeps ignoring it. So you just want to focus more on Liz McGuire. Or any of this other crap. That I don't give a shit about. So no way in hell. <laughs> I'm not going to... Or any any more of this High School Musical crap. Or any of the, the Jonas Brothers. I mean, I'm tired of this. Okay. I don't want to see any more of this stuff. And I don't want to see any more reboots of Home Alone, nor The Sandlot, or any other film, okay? Enough is enough. Leave the classics alone. Just because you own Fox now doesn't mean you want to go around butchering good movies. Seriously, Disney. And now you're just going around uh, blocking all these uh, movie events at local uh, theaters out there, you know, for midnight screenings or all this other stuff. Yeah, I noticed it a lot lately, too. I just saw an article about that. <laughs> okay, I know. I know, that's just going on and on, okay. But but the fact is, though, you know, I love Disney, though. And I love Fox. And same goes with Sony, too. I don't like the way things are going with these companies, you know, you know demanding more money or, or coming up with more sorry excuse to screwing everything up. Okay? <laughs> you know with their greed. No more of this, okay? I, I've had enough of it. Okay, and that's, well, this is a perfect start for the review. <laughs> but, but with that aside, um, the movie's not bad. Uh, actually, it's uh, a lot uh, entertaining as I thought um, after Homecoming. Um, but it does have some issues here and there. It always seems to happen these days in, in these films, but Either way, I, I had a good time. Got to see it with my family. and hey, It was definitely worth it. So, so let's uh, get to the review. And yes, there's going to be spoilers because it seems like Tom Holland loves to review him. <laughs> okay, you know how he is. But if you haven't seen the movie, then my suggestion, go see it for yourself. Or basically have a chance to go out before, you know, they won't play it anymore. And you have to wait until Blu-ray, 4K Ultra HD, DVD, digital, whatever. Um, so yes, if you haven't seen it, then don't watch this review. <laughs> okay. So there's going to be some spoilers. Um, anyway, it stars Tom Holland, Samuel Jackson, Zendaya, Kopi Smolders, uh, John Farrow, J.P. Smoove, uh, Jacob Batalon, Martin Starr, Marissa Tomei, and Jake Gyllenhaal. It's, um, of course, based on Spider-Man by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, God rest their souls. It's written by Chris McKenna and Eric Summers, and it's directed by John Waltz, who previously directed Homecoming. The movie begins somewhere in Mexico. We meet the former agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury and Maria Hill, both played by Samuel Jackson and Kobe Smulders. They investigated an unnatural storm which reveals a creature known as Earth Elemental, and that's where we meet a super powerful man named Mysterio, which is Quentin Beck, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, who arrives to fight the creature. But meanwhile, in New York City, the Midtown School of Science and Technology are being restarted from an academic year to accommodate all the students around that reassured the blimp 
eight months earlier and they're about to organize a two-week summer trip to Europe while Peter Parker is still um, having to cope with um, the death of Tony Stark aka Iron Man played by Robert Downey Jr. which uh, happened during the events uh, as you already saw in Avengers Endgame if you haven't seen the movie yet but if you have seen it you begin to find out what happened so he plans to confess his feelings with um, MJ played by Zendaya and try to avoid all the heroics that he had to deal with and him as Spider-Man you know, our friendly neighborhood Spidey you know going around stopping all these bad guys not to mention um, dealing with a fundraiser uh, that's run by Aunt May played by Mercer to May you know for the homeless but Parker's being forewarned by Happy Hogan, who is um, who worked with um, Stark Industries uh, with uh, Tony Stark. It's played by John Farrow. That he'll be contacted by Nick Fury himself, but he chose to ignore the call. Yeah, he, I mean he was afraid to actually ghost him out, which he wasn't supposed to. But Parker suddenly leaves to overwhelm every question about uh, Tony Stark and not to mention he, he wants to continue uh, going on the trip uh, with his students. They traveled uh, to Venice, Italy. That's when his classmate Brad Davis, who's a complete jerk and a total dick, who, who seems to be emerged from the competitor of MJ's affections, um, yeah, because he just loves to do so. He loves to give uh, Parker a hard time. That's where we see the water elemental strikes uh, Venice. They they just go around exploring the Italy and going to certain places and taking pictures and all this other stuff. Parker actually uh, bought a, a present for MJ, so hoping they'll get to know one another and be able to able to have a chance to have the affection. Um, he spotted the creature and that's when he tries to, to stop it. Um, I mean the entire uh, city was already wrecking havoc. Even the the class actually stayed at a local hotel that's already in ruins as it is. Um, anyway, they, he tries to um, so anyway, that's when Mysterio uh, shows up to, to fight the creature. Meanwhile, uh, Parker was trying to find a way to keep everything safe using his web slinging, dropping from one building to another. And he even went all the way up to the clock tower and tries to uh, hold on tight uh, with his web slings because the building was already falling apart. You know, the creature's like slashing everything. Um, but in the end, um, he was safe uh, along with the rest of the classmates. So it, now we know this is going to be a problem because um, now he was uh, being called in by Nick Fury to actually meet with Parker and gives him and you know, starts his glasses, which has the artificial intelligence name Edith, as you may recall. Um, which acts as all the database to Stark Industries, which also commands a large overball weapon supply. Yeah, which I, I know um, by accident, though. At first, um, once he was assigned for the job, uh, joining in with uh, Beck, Mysterio, we begin to learn that, uh, that all the elementals actually killed his family that he held from a different reality which among many of them was straight into the multiverse. Parker just rejects uh, the call of arms for Fury and decided to just continue to rejoin his class but they had to find a better way to rearrange that to avoid um, the safety of his uh, classmates even his teachers around because 
because you know they they want to be safe. You know they don't they don't want to get involved in in all of this situation. Because now we know this is going to be very difficult for for Peter Parker to actually have his time. Because he really wanted to just uh, you know have for the best trip of his life and want to be able to get to know MJ better. So Ferry conveys the redirection of the school's trip um, from Paris to Prague, and and then you know they had to go all the way to a, a local uh, opera so they'd be safe. But the fire elemental uh, has projected the strike straight to the carnival, and uh, it actually appears. So then uh, with joining in with uh, Beck. With Parker's help, just dressing up as uh, using a new uh, Spider-Man costume, they're here to stop um, the fire to mental and, and try to have uh, both his friend Ned joining in with uh, his girlfriend that he's about to get to know each other. Um, just hang around at going to the Ferris wheel, but they were being trapped by the creature and. So they have to stop it as soon as they can. Um, so when they finally destroyed it, um, Fury and Hill invites Parker and Beck to Berlin to uh, discuss the formation of a new superhero team, hoping things will turn out for the best. So Parker uh, suddenly gives Beck the glasses, so maybe he'll continue to, to run the the Stark Industries to see how this will, will turn out. Maybe for the best, but then that's where, and this is going to be the biggest spoiler of them all, when we found out that we begin to notice that um, through all the holographic illusions uh, of specialists around, crew members who all were fired at Stark Industries that begin to work together as a team, and that's when we learned that Beck is the villain throughout this entire movie, the whole time. And they team up just to stop uh, Peter Parker and starts to relaunch all these uh, creatures around, not to mention having all these uh, drones, which that means that uh, Beck is going to take over, starts to um, try to trick um, Parker, begin to know if Ed if everyone else are either just um, there or, or not, so they're all like disappearing, and that leads to all these uh, holographic uh, nightmares here and there that's happening, and then because Beck is now using the uh, the Edith glasses to control it, and now he'll be able to have the command to you know to stop Peter Parker and everything. But it was up to him to actually find a way to actually save uh, everyone because they're getting involved and and they begin to find out his secrets to actually fight against those drones and try to stop uh, Beck and hopefully uh, Parker will finally get a chance to um, be able to win his affections with MJ and see how everything will happen if this continues. Um, but hey, I'll leave it at there. Uh, but in a way, it's um, it's a good sequel. I mean, it it follows it after a Homecoming, and I thought it got a bit better as it turns out. Once we get to the story, I do love all the gadgets that he has too. I mean, okay, you know, Stark is pretty lucky to actually give him all that stuff that that he never thought he would have, and and then of course he gets a a brand new uh, spy suit that's created uh, straight from Stark Industries and so no matter what he uses and Happy Hogan joins in to help him out after getting stuck uh, in the middle of nowhere from another city in Italy around uh, the European uh, areas and um, yeah there's <laughs> There's even one moment, too, where suddenly they played the song by ACDC, yeah, Back in Black, and then he suddenly mistakenly uh, think of it as Led Zeppelin, and I, I couldn't believe 
he made that wrong um, in that particular moment too. Um, well, we're going to get to the battle and stuff. Um, I look, but yes, he, he gets a lot of great gadgets and stuff that he gets to use, especially when he uses the Edith glasses. Um, oh no, it's um, it's a good sequel. Um, it's great to see what um, what Spider Man had to offer. You know, when Parker is just joining in, going to a European vacation, having fun with his friends, but it just gets in the way with heroics here and there. But good performances here and there, especially Holland, and um, a lot of great action scenes here and there as, as it follows, you know, with the elementals and the drones and all that stuff. But other than that, though, it's, uh, it's cool. But it's fun to see um, Holland once again as Parker and Spider-Man, you know, continue to go for his adventures, even though it's going to be pretty difficult for him having to, to go to a, a field trip and you know, with his classmates and then trying to win his affections with MJ. And I know that's pretty difficult. Meanwhile, having to work with um, Nick Fury, uh, Maria Hill, and then joining in with Quentin Beck to stop all these uh, elemental creatures around, that sort of thing, and trying to help out with all these other uh, classmates of his, including uh, Ned. <laughs> That sort of thing. Um, of course, Brad Davis is a complete jerk, as I'm going to get to, because, uh, well, what happened in the, the movie, though, was when he was being assigned to wear um, the new uh, Spider-Man suit um, by uh, one of, um, one of uh, Fury's, uh, one of uh, Fury's uh, agents. But it was a European lady who uh, assigned him to actually change the suit. But it was kind of embarrassing because uh, he was about to change right in front of a lady. And then Brad just snuck up and took a picture of him thinking that like he has an affection with uh, the <laughs> European lady. And he wants to show it to MJ on his cell phone. So... What he was trying to do was he had to put on the glasses, you know, Stark's glasses, which has Edith, and he was trying to find a way to go straight into uh, Brad's his cell phone because he could spot all the uh, the text messages from all the <laughs> the cell phones that the the students have, you know. So it's really interesting that he gets to invade uh, the privacy here and there. But he was trying to find a way to target him to actually get rid of that photo. But by accident, he actually launched a, a missile straight from the satellites. And, and he was trying to find a way to avoid it. So, I, I thought that was hilarious. Um, and then, um, which then, of course, Brad starts to reveal um, the secret and then which I'm kind of glad that at least the teachers, uh, as opposed to the students uh, at the end, had actually realized uh, what uh, Brad was doing. And and I'm glad that he got into trouble for that. So thank goodness, because that would be a problem, too, because then MJ will know. And then, of course, Ned uh, trying to get to know uh, a girl. And at times, you know, they, they had, like... Uh, a short-lived relationship with each other, trying to have affection to one another, and that sort of thing. Yeah, it was the blonde girl. Um, and, of course, all, all the other <laughs> funny scenes where Nick Fury shows up inside uh, Parker's uh, hotel room and actually shot uh, Ned <laughs> with a tranquilizer dart. <laughs> Passed out and stuff. And, well, I mean, it goes on and on, but it has some great action scenes here and there. The scenes with the, the creatures that was going around. 
uh, and all these other ones that were going here and there with the, the drones and that's where we begin to see like a vision straight from uh, Spider-Man he begins to see what was happening once uh, Beck took over and we learned that he was a villain um, and yes there are some cameos here and there that we saw I know we don't see uh, uh, Stan Lee in this but nevertheless his, you know, he's no longer with us and they didn't film the scene uh, but either way um, this is going to be uh, a pretty uh, small cameo um, another spoiler <laughs> was that we got to see jo J. Jonah Jaberson um, that's from the original Spider-Man trilogy you know, played by uh, J.K. Simmons because this is where this happened in the mid credit scene that he was shocked that uh, he began to find out about uh, Beck you know, during the climax scene and gets to reveal his identity which is really messed up and wow I usually don't talk about those uh, post credit scenes that much but I think it's really cool that there was a cameo and yes there may be issues here and there I mean especially with Parker you know having to not be able to have his own privacy every time he starts to to reveal his identity and it just seems like everyone keeps snucking in everywhere he goes I mean come on I mean give this guy a break I mean they did that with homecoming and now it's like now everyone has to know his secret I mean come on man it's ridiculous in other situations but other than that though I um, I'm glad it's doing so well so far uh, at the box office and and I'm just happy to see that this is yet another um, fun sequel that's definitely worth watching maybe even more than once if, if you get to so so anyway uh, that's Spider-Man Far From Home and I give the movie four stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later Bye.